In a previous video, we talked about the light reaction which took place in the presence of sunlight and using the energy from sunlight in the chloroplast, plants were able to produce ATP and NADPH and release oxygen as the byproduct. We learnt at the end of the video that light reaction products would go on to fuel the dark reaction, would enable this dark reaction to take place in the chloroplast itself. Where the dark reaction takes place within the chloroplast actually depends on where the products of the light reaction are formed. From the previous video, we learnt that both ATP and NADPH were released into the stroma of the chloroplast, which is where this dark reaction is going to take place. Using ATP and NADPH and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, plants are finally going to be able to produce glucose which they can then break down to produce energy for their day-to-day -day activities. And what is this dark reaction? Like I mentioned, it doesn't mean that it takes place only during the night. It starts a little while after light reaction, after sufficient quantities of ATP and NADPH have been produced. And it also stops when there is no sunlight because that means that light reaction will not take place and ATP and NADPH will not be produced. So it is actually a misnomer to call this a dark reaction. The correct term is actually light independent reaction. So let's take a look at what this dark reaction is. The dark reaction actually is a cyclical process that is known as the Calvin cycle. It is named after the scientist who discovered this process, Melvin Calvin. This Calvin cycle takes place in the presence of this enzyme which is very important called ribulose, bisphosphate, carboxylase, oxygenase. I know this is quite a mouthful to say and remember. Instead, you can remember it as Rubisco. RU stands for ribulose, BIS stands for bisphosphate, C stands for carboxylase and O stands for oxygenase. This is the most abundant enzyme, the most abundant protein on earth because all plants, all algae, anything that photosynthesizes contains this enzyme to convert carbon dioxide into glucose. Without this enzyme, this entire process will not take place, which is why ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase or Rubisco is the most important enzyme in the plants. Calvin cycle takes place in three stages. The first stage involves carbon fixation, second stage is reduction and the third stage is regeneration. Let's take a closer look at this Calvin cycle to understand what these three stages are. So this is the simplified reaction of the Calvin cycle. This is how it looks like. We're going to start with a single carbon dioxide molecule. This circle here represents the number of carbon atoms in the compound. In the first step, in the carbon fixation step, carbon dioxide will combine with a 5 carbon compound known as ribulose bisphosphate or RUBP. RU because ribulose. BP for bisphosphate. So this is 5 carbons, ribulose bisphosphate or RUBP. This is going to combine with this one carbon compound or carbon dioxide in the presence of Rubisco. This is where Rubisco catalyzes this reaction. 5 carbon compound combines with this carbon dioxide to give a very short lived 6 carbon intermediate which is immediately split into 2 three carbon compounds known as phosphoglyceric acid or PGA. Each of this is a three carbon compound. So here you have six carbons that is splitting into two three carbon compounds. The next step is the reduction stage where the products of the light reaction are used up. ATP is converted to ADP and PI and NADPH is converted to NADP plus and H plus and whatever electrons are released in this process, they go and combine with this phosphoglyceric acid PGA and convert it to a yet another three carbon compound known as glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate G3P. There is no change in the number of carbon atoms in the reduction stage Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is also a 3-carbon compound. PGA, phosphoglyceric acid, is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Out of this, one molecule goes ahead to make glucose. 
one of the molecules goes ahead to make glucose the other molecule goes ahead to regenerate this rubp this is the regeneration stage now you might be wondering the number of carbon atoms is not adding up and it is true you are right the number of carbon atoms is not adding up because we know glucose is c6 h12 o6 which means it needs six carbon atoms and there are only three carbon atoms in this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate again glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate has only three carbon atoms but rubp has five so where are these excess carbon atoms coming from well they don't come from anywhere else except carbon dioxide what happens is this entire calvin cycle occurs six times inside each plant for one glucose to be produced this cycle turns six times so at the end you have six carbon dioxide molecules entering the cycle and what a balanced reaction looks like is something like this so let's track the number of carbon atoms to understand how this reaction is balanced now so here we have six carbon atoms from co2 it is going to combine with rubp and each rubp has five carbon atoms remember in the carbon fixation stage this is going to combine with six molecules of rubp which means that you have 6 into 5 carbon which is a total of 30 carbon atoms so if you add these two because these both are combining you're going to get a total of 36 carbon atoms so these 36 carbon atoms are going to be converted into 12 molecules of pga again you have to remember each pga has three carbons right so 12 into 3 is 36 so 12 molecules of pga when it is being converted to g3p in the reduction stage like i mentioned there is no change in the number of carbon atoms so you get 36 carbon atoms here as well from this we know that you need two g3ps to make one glucose because g3p has three carbon atoms so you need two g3ps to make one c6h12 O six. So, if you remove six carbon atoms from this thirty-six carbon atoms, totally you will get thirty carbon atoms, which are what is needed to regenerate this six molecules of RUBP. We started off with thirty carbon atoms in RUBP, and we're ending up with again thirty carbon atoms to regenerate RUBP. So, this is what a balanced Calvin cycle reaction looks like. six molecules of carbon dioxide combining with six molecules of rubp to give 12 phosphoglyceric acid molecules and they are converted to 12 molecules of g3p out of which two molecules go ahead to form one glucose molecule and the remaining 10 g3ps are used to regenerate this six molecules of rubp we're finally ending up with 30 carbon atoms here 10 into 3 is 30 to give back this 6 rubp molecules and this is the entire calvin cycle reaction that involves converting carbon dioxide or fixing carbon dioxide to give glucose the glucose is stored sometimes as sucrose which is a disaccharide in the cells sometimes glucose is also converted into a polysaccharide known as starch and then stored in different parts like tubers like potatoes or even their roots and stems as well whenever they need it the plants will break down the starch into simple glucose compounds and then use it to produce energy